The powers that be behind the MCU really, really want the lead actor of the Eternals to be played by an openly gay actor. The key question is, why? I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. Welcome to the occupation. Hang your collar up inside. Hang your freedom higher. It's the only way to be sure. After Avengers Endgame, the current main arc of the MCU will come to a close. Several actors' contracts only run through Endgame, and it is widely speculated that they will depart the franchise. New heroes, most definitely including the newly launched Captain Marvel, are set to take their place. Among these, in some form or fashion, are the Eternals. The Eternals movie is already in pre-production and looks set to continue exploring what some call the cosmic side of the MCU that was introduced by the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. The most recent information I can find says it will start filming in August 2019 for release in November 2020, though if this has been confirmed by Marvel, I have not found it. There's speculation that the Eternals will allow Marvel Studios to explore the origins of the overall MCU and perhaps lead to introducing other cosmic characters such as the Silver Surfer, Galactus, and Annihilus into the franchise. As I have said before on this channel, I've never been much of a comics reader. I knew next to nothing about the Eternals when I first heard the movie was on the slate. I've since learned some stuff I'm not going to go into in this video because there's just no way of knowing what story elements from the comics will make their way onto the screen. An outlet called That Hashtag Show reported a while back that the Eternals who will appear in the movie are Cersei, Icarus, Gilgamesh, Makari, Elysius, Thena, Zurus, and Star Fox, who is the brother of Thanos in the comics. CBR.com reports that Marvel is searching for an actor, 30 to 49, who physically looks like a superhero, quote-unquote, to take on one of the Eternals' lead roles. Additionally, they say, while they are open to actors of all ethnicities, they would prefer the role go to, quote, an openly gay actor, end quote. Which leads to my question. Why? There is literally nothing on the Marvel page for the Eternals as of the date I am recording this, so to find out about these characters, I had to rely on the Marvel fandom wikia. My apologies now to comics fans for any details I got wrong doing my research. There is some conflicting information on some of these characters' pages. I did the best I could to parse through it and get the essentials that seem to be uncontradicted. The same goes for pronunciations. So here's a list of the relationships I could find evidence of these characters having been in in the comics. Cersei, who's a female. Makari, Dane Whitman, Samuel Holden, Thane Ector, all male. Icarus, who's a male. A mortal woman from Crete. And Margot Damien, both female. Gilgamesh, a male. No relationships I could find. Makari, a male, the aforesaid relationship with the female Cersei is the only one listed. Elysius, who's female, had a relationship with Marvell, who was male. This name was given to a female character in the Captain Marvel movie, but she is now deceased in the MCU. Thena, also female, had a relationship with Crow and Thomas Elliot, both male. Zurus, a male, had a relationship with Sibel, female. And Star Fox, also known as Eros. He's the one who's the brother of Thanos. He's a male who's depicted as being a longtime womanizer and dissolute pleasure seeker. He is known to have had a relationship with a prostitute named Heater Delight and to have seduced She-Hulk at least once. Again, both female. Maybe he's going to take Tony Stark's place for that certain brand of humor only Robert Downey Jr. has been able to deliver so far. In short, as best as I am able to discover, none of the characters projected to be in this movie is gay or even inclined to bisexuality in the canon. The MCU is, of course, free to change that. They've established that they're now willing to put harvesting woke points ahead of good storytelling, so perhaps they will. They could also resurrect the female character they named Marvell if they want to maintain Elysius's canon relationship but have it be with a female. Marvell has, however, been dead since approximately 1989 in the MCU, so depending on the plot, that might be a problem. Alternatively, we have heard that Brie Larson wants Carol Danvers to have a lesbian lover in the MCU, so maybe they'll resurrect Marvell for that instead. Who knows? Nobody cares if they decide to make one of these characters gay, but even if they do decide to do that, there's still no need for a specifically gay lead actor. Why should that matter, you ask? Why can't a gay lead actor play a straight character or just one who isn't presented as being in a relationship at all? Aren't romantic relationships kind of rare in the MCU? To which I respond, you're absolutely right on all points. The odds are that whoever gets this role will not be in a relationship at all, and it's even less likely he'll be in a gay relationship. So what difference does it make? None. Not one bit. But for some reason, Marvel cares. They have chosen to elevate tokenism, so-called representation, ahead of the craft of movie making, for nothing other than woke points. Neil Patrick Harris spent years playing a womanizing pickup artist type character on TV, and if anyone, anywhere, has ever complained about the fact that the lead actor playing Barney is actually married to another man, I have never seen it. He also played himself as a crazy wild child who does coke off the backsides of female hookers while driving at high speed in Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And again, I've never seen a hint of complaint about it. 
The only reason Marvel wants a gay man to play an Eternal is so they can tout their SJW representation credit. It's stupid. Cast a person who fits the role. No sane person cares whether the actor is gay, straight, bi, queer, asexual, pansexual, or a fucking furry in their private life, so long as they perform competently. All that matters is what's on the screen. But the non-sane people who do care about this stuff care a lot. And for reasons which are never explained but which we can all guess, a multinational corporation that makes $200 million mass-market superhero movies cares far more about the opinions of that tiny fringe than they do about just making good movies. Until pretty recently, they haven't let it show much. But I guess that they think they now have the leverage to let their woke flag fly. Captain Marvel was just a preview of the wokeness flood to come. All of which leads to a broader topic that has been bothering me for quite some time. There has been a steadily growing movement in cultural circles in the last few years decrying the use of actors who don't match the characteristics of the characters they play. Of course it only goes one way. The SJWs will not only allow the character James Bond, a white Scottish secret agent based on real people Ian Fleming knew, to be played by a black man, they all but demand that it happen. Now I love Idris Elba, but he should not play James Bond. He would be marvelous playing a similar type of character, I have no doubt. But for some reason, creating a new character for a non-white male to portray is almost never presented as an option. We must have a black James Bond, or a female Doctor Who, or female Ghostbusters. I don't get it. Anyway, back to the other side of this coin. We hear it more and more often that so-called cisgender people shouldn't play gay or transgender roles. The latter is the one I myself seem to hear the most often, and I just don't understand it. The Oxford English Dictionary defines acting as, quote, the art or occupation of performing fictional roles in plays, films, or television, end quote. An actor is defined as a person who does this. In short, the job description is to pretend to be something one is not. So how the ever-living fuck can it matter if the actor playing a lesbian is herself straight? Obviously, as in the Neil Patrick Harris example, or presumably the Eternals, it isn't the vice versa that gets complaints. Just the straight person who identifies the same as their biological sex playing something else. I mean, I rather liked Sense8, in which transgender actress Jamie Clayton portrays the transgender woman Naomi Marks. There's certainly a great deal of easily achieved verisimilitude in such a casting decision, but that's as far as it goes. There is no rational reason that a straight biologically female actress could not have portrayed Nomi. Makeup effects can make Samuel L. Jackson convincingly 20 years younger at least one-third of the times Captain Marvel tries to do so. It can also make a biological female look like she used to be biologically male for an hour of television. Let me be very clear here. I have no problem at all with transgender actresses playing any character they're competent to play. That includes non-transgender female roles, male roles, fuzzy green aliens from Betelgeuse, or anything else. And what with all the other preaching since 8 worked into its otherwise fairly good story, there was never a chance that role was going to go to an actress who wasn't transgender. But we hear it more and more that straight actors should never be allowed to play gay or trans characters. Trans actress Jen Richards actually said that casting straight actors in trans roles perpetuates violence against trans women. No, really, that happened. Even leaving aside the rather small pool of trans actors available to play trans roles, this is insane. Utterly barking Looney Tunes. One would think that the mere fact that there are now enough trans characters appearing in movies and TV that this is even an issue worth discussing would count for something. We are, after all, constantly told that people desperately need to see more people like themselves on the screen. But apparently not. Instead, the increase in the culture's openness to including trans characters is, instead, an argument for a special guild with exclusive rights to any such roles regardless of other considerations. Perhaps the most famous example was Scarlett Johansson's now-canceled plan to portray a transgender character in Rub and Tug. Activists ginned up an outrage mob, and she dropped out with the usual ritual apology. But if a marginalized group wants representation, how could they complain about this? Seriously, Scarlett Johansson is at the top of the A-list. She can do any project she wants, and the mere presence of her name on the movie poster guarantees it will get made and seen. And she carries enough clout to ensure that a pet project like this one gets made well, meaning it would likely have been very attractive to Oscar voters. I do realize that special effects work aside, her being the lead in Ghost in the Shell didn't work out this way. Her playing a supposedly Asian character in that one was also, of course, complained about, which was stupid in an almost unique way since a large portion of the movie's theme is that the cyborg body she inhabits is all but irrelevant to the ghost within it. Ghost in the Shell got made despite the protests. As a fan of the anime, both in movie and TV form, I did not think it was a particularly good movie for a lot of reasons, but none of those reasons had anything to do with Scarlett Johansson playing the cyborg lead character. But it is now extremely unlikely that Rub and Tug will get made at all. Its IMDb page is all but empty. The director and writer's names are listed, along with a plot synopsis and a news note about Johansson dropping out due to the protests. And that's it. No new updates for almost a year. So I ask you, 
Did transgendered people who'd like to see more positive portrayals of trans people in popular culture win by killing this movie? Or would their long-term interests have been better served by having an actress beloved by everyone on Earth who isn't an Iranian mullah ensure that the movie got made and shown in theaters? It's not just limited to trans characters, of course. As recently as 2005, when Brokeback Mountain came out, A-list straight actors playing gay characters was seen as a bold career choice and surefire Oscar bait. Now it's almost a hate crime. Where Will Smith once got broad, nearly universal praise for playing a gay character, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon got a nice dose of outrage mob for having the temerity to play gay men in the Liberace movie. Even the Washington Post got in on it, lamenting that the movie would have been ever so much better if it had had more genuine gay men in it. All of this is profoundly stupid. I do actually understand and appreciate the idea that minorities would like to see more people like themselves in popular culture. That makes perfect sense. But as with most things SJWs touch, that idea has now been taken to ridiculous extremes. What is the point of demanding that existing characters be recast with actors of different races or sexes instead of just creating new ones? Is the absence of a black character specifically named James Bond somehow preventing a black secret agent character from being the protagonist in a movie? If so, I think Nick Fury should kick the ass of whoever is responsible. He can bring Agent J with him. Now everyone complains that Hollywood has been taken over by sequels and reboots and superhero movies, but then a very loud contingent turns around and demands in no uncertain terms that Hollywood run through its entire catalog of well-established characters and do them over with actors with darker skin or more X chromosomes. But they also say that Jared Leto has blood on his hands for not shaving before he accepted an Oscar for playing a trans character. So Hollywood had better tread lightly.